we all sin and we all have our ups and downs but we all need to be able to connect with god and enjoy him on a personal uh, level when we do that on a individual level then we come together as a family and we enjoy him on a family level when we do it on a family level and there's family worship and there's family prayer and there's family rejoicing and singing then we come together as a church and as a church we are a bunch of families a bunch of home groups and then we don't need anybody else so what's really driving this particular series for me is a, the practical training of how to be worshipful in our own lives individually as a family and as uh, as a as a church i want us to break the crutches and i want us to break our dependence on anything else break the crutches and break our dependence on anybody else so that we are not at this place that unless this happens i am not able to worship unless there's a worship leader i am not able to worship. unless there's music unless there's words unless there's more spiritual people around unless that i'm in a good mood you know you see what i'm where i'm going with this there needs to be this ongoing battery ongoing recharge ongoing rejoicing little party happening in your own heart that worship is constant and when you come together the embers that are already burning that come together just light up and then we have a fire that's what i envision for the sunday morning services and the and the worship services so we are, we we're going to meet in in venues like this we're going to meet in home groups we're going to meet in 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 uh, army postings there's going to be crazy little different situations where our our churches are going to meet chapel covenant chapels are going to meet and when they do that i want to break the mold of saying this is how we do church that unless we have a worship leader unless we have a band unless we have powerpoint unless we have uh, you know a run up to the whole thing you know and and then we want inspiring worship and we want inspiring this and it gets to a point where basically you're you're one foot away from dead and you want the rest of the world you want the church you want the pastor you want to just pick you up and put you in the presence of god to the point where you're like you know like the like the lame person brought the four fellows brought the lame person to jesus and he's just lying there here lord do something with me that has got to change that's what it seems like i'm not talking about our congregation all congregations all all believers around and and that's what's driving my heart for this particular this particular series how to worship without a worship leader how to worship without music and song how to worship without sensationalism so from the beginning we've had the worship leader sit down i've been sitting down pastor chan others sit down so that there's a sense of commune you know you 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 looking at each other a sense of the family has gotten together there is no show if you wanted to put on a show i can put on a show God has given me the talent and God has given me the contacts and God has given me the the resources to be able to put on a show. If we wanted to fill this place with musicians and put on a show, we can do that. And I have done that and you've seen it. But then when I look back and I'm standing in the front row and I look at this amazing broadcast the production on stage and I look back and I see everybody in the congregation, the audience and they're just like the young people are dumping up and down because that's they have to do something with the energy but everybody else is not engaged and they don't leave better people if you understand what i'm saying they don't leave with a deeper personal that doesn't continue into tuesday morning right after the interview or right after the evaluation or right after wednesday night you know last minute meeting with the boss kind of thing you know you see what i'm what i'm going with this where is it when are we going to get everybody to a place in their spiritual life where there's a song in their heart before the worship leader starts that's what this uh, this uh, series is about and uh, with that kind of as an introduction and that as a as as the motif and the and the theme of where i'm going with let me begin we're a three part series and we're talking about loving god how do i love god how do i enjoy him how do i enjoy his presence and today we're talking about enjoying god's presence in solitude again we're all over the place because i want us to build a a personal understand a, un, understand the personal relationship i have with god and what i have in the context of a personal relationship with god and then a few pointers on how we could do that are you with me is that okay very good how to enjoy god one on one uh can you just get me my water please how to enjoy god one on one and find strength in his presence it says david encouraged himself in the lord we looked at that verse not too long ago do you remember that 
David encouraged himself in the Lord. I want us to get to that place where we're leading ourselves in worship. We're leading our hearts to worship. As David, uh, in, in psychology, we call it self-talk. Self-talk is good. Self-motivation is good. But it's basically self-talk where you turn around and speak to yourself. And say, What's going on with you? Get your act together. Why are you downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Are you with me? That's the kind of thing that we're talking about. Three words normally associate in my head, three words associate with private worship. I've been a personal worshiper all my life. Ever since I was five, I remember, you know, just wanting to, to love Jesus and be very expressive. It's more because I was a musician and because I, I was a songwriter. And in the early years, it was easy for me. But what if you don't like music? What if you notice you know, musician, what if you, music is not your pathway to, think. that's what I want to get into. How do we make it personal? And I want to, uh, and what is the, what is the connect? I want to get into that. Three words, wonder, thirst, and rest. Wonder, thirst, and rest seem to, uh, instead of wonder, it usually becomes wonder. But, <laughs> but wonder is that always finding something new like we're in a relationship and we're always finding new something new about the person and that person is always filled with reasons to wonder so always wondering always uh, engaging with God and finding new things about him the third the second verse, word is thirst thirst when David talk calls thirst or the Bible says I thirst for God I thirst for God uh, you get to that point where suddenly you remember your body or mind reminds you that you need water. You know, you can go through a very long time and you don't have water, tea can, no problem. You drink coffee, you drink it. But suddenly you get to the point where you really need water. And now you're like, other than water, nothing else is going to, I need water. And most of us have never been to that point where we are so thirsty that our lips have gotten parched and we have dehydrated. Most of us have not been there. Some have been there. But we have... David is talking about, I get to that point very quickly because I've been away from God. I, I haven't been meditating. Or I haven't been enjoying his presence. I thirst for God. And finally, a rest, just coming to God and have finding rest. Are you anxious? Are you struggling with a storm inside? Are you worried about the future? Are you engaged with some sort of a mental battle or a spiritual battle or a or relational, emotional battle, constantly is your heart churning within you with some matter, some issue. And the issue over here is coming to God's presence and enjoying his presence and you have that rest. You come to a point of rest. In music, we have one, two, three, four. Rest. The engine comes to rest. Machines come to rest. There's a point where you come stop churning, stop striving stop trying so hard and just come to to rest in God I want you to enjoy some of these verses when you get into God's presence and you're alone with him your rejoicing your worship is going to be based on what he brings to the relationship not what you bring to the relationship so whenever you and I talk about worship we're thinking what am I saying to God but when God talks about worship, he's saying, what am I enjoying from God? Because worshiping God is what God does. I repeat, worshiping God is what God does. Worship is when you're enjoying what God is doing, what God is being to me. And the very fact that you're enjoying that is worship. Worship is not what is coming out of your mouth. Worship is not what, if God is carrying you and you're enjoying being carried by God, you are worshiping God. If God is, uh, uh, if God is correcting you and he is molding you and it's painful and you are enjoying the process of being in his hands as painful as it be, you are worshiping God. When you express to him your thanks or your appreciation or your acknowledgement that this is what he's doing in my life, you are worshipping God. Because you are basing everything on his character and on his uh, benefits, advantages that he brings to the relationship. Who is he and what does he do for you? My refuge and strength, David calls him. Psalm 25 verse 20. We're just scanning these verses to just enjoy them. Guard my life. Rescue me. Imagine you're alone with God and you're telling God these things. When this goes into the system, it comes out through your own words and through your own expressions. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame for I take refuge in you. 
that's another way of saying lord i am about to get embarrassed i i i'm not prepared for this interview i'm not prepared for this exam i'm not prepared for this situation i'm not prepared to meet, meet this person i'm not even prepared for this day i'm scared of getting embarrassed i'm scared of being ashamed lord guard my life and rescue me do not let me be put to shame psalm 31 was 4 keep me free from the trap that is set for me for you are my refuge 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 strength strength refuge what is going to god going to protect me from he's going to protect me from the things that people set up for me they set me up for failure they set me up for disappointment they set me up for, they don't do it purposely necessarily but they set me up to trip and fall they set me up to look like an idiot they set me up to 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 uh to let people down these traps that people set up for me satan set up sets up for me sometimes i just walk straight into them lord would you protect me keep me free from the trap that is set for me are you looking at that verse if david said this about god and god put took it and put it in scripture god is basically saying hey i do that i do that it's something i do i i set people free i i i help people i keep people free from the trap number seven, uh, psalm 71 was 3 be my rock of my refuge be my rock of refuge to which i always go underline that be my rock of refuge to which i always go give the command to save me for you are my rock i say lord from the from your throne just just send the send out the command to let, set me free send out the command to get me out of trouble send that this is the dynamic of your personal walk with god psalm 59 verse 16 but i will sing of your say it strength in the morning i will sing of your love for you are my fortress my refuge in times of trouble lord i am going to take you anywhere and everywhere with me if i am sick in bed you're going to be with me if i'm walking in through a valley experience you're going to be with me if i'm walking into a difficult situation you're going to be with me if i walk into sin you're still going to be around i will sing of your strength because your presence strengthens me it emboldens me it encourages me 2 2 samuel 22 33 It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. It's God who's the one who arms me with strength. He holds your hand as you lift something. He as you pick your burdens up, he puts his arms under that and he picks you up. He gives you that strength. He speaks strength into your inner man. Psalm 28 verse 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield, my heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. So my personal trust my personal confidence my personal assurance is in the fact that God is right next to me he's with me where does all of this come from from being in God's presence from enjoying God's presence from knowing that he is there he's with you because you have to be long enough in his presence alone i repeat you have to be long enough in his presence alone to know that he is always with you even when you are not alone even when you are not alone when people are with you people are engaging with you god is still standing by you when you go to work god is standing by you when you get on a truck or get on a uh, on a bus or a plane god is with you so you i'm not just talking about the fancy emotional aspect of god is with you god cares for you god looks after yeah he does that but a very personal engagement of having your invisible savior with you He is my glory and the lifter of my head. Psalm three three says, "But thou, O Lord, art the she art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. My glory. He's the one who, who exalts you. He he lifts your chin up to be able to look up at your problems and say, 'We can do this together.'" He's my teacher. Teach me to do your will, O God. You if, um, may your good spirit lead me on a level ground. Teach me what what would you teach me to do your will? he's my refuge he's my strength he's my glory the lifter of my head he's my teacher he's my counselor proverbs 8:14 counsel and sound judgment are mine i have insight i have power samus says <coughs> psalm 32 verse 8 says i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go i will counsel you with my loving eye on you look at it stare at it underline it that's god's commitment to you i will instruct you i will teach you in the way that you should go i will counsel you i will counsel you with my loving eye that means your his full attention is on you god's counsel is available so that you do not 
walk into trouble so that you do not make unnecessary decisions wrong decisions long term uh, bad decisions all right so those are some of the verses i i was i didn't know which ones to cut out there were so many verses as i i myself was just enjoying them and thinking oh i wish i could share i wish i could just enjoy these verses but if you want to do go to biblegateway.com uh, and simply say refuge simply say strength simply say glory simply put in one of these words and verses will just line up and for no reason at all just read through those verses just read through those verses and they will begin to speak to you because it's nothing but scripture and the word of god so worshiping god on my own alone is what today is all about today i want how are we getting to a place where i don't need anybody else to worship i don't need anybody else to worship number 1 enjoying god's presence means utilizing the benefits and advantages enjoying god's presence means utilizing the benefits and advantages that he provides to me personally is god with the church yes he's with the church is god with believers yes he's with believers is god with the with my family yes he's with my family but how and what does he do for me personally what can i depend on him personally about my life about my own life enjoying god's presence means utilizing using making use of taking advantage of the advantages that he provides to me personally he says david says be my rock to which i always go did you notice that be my rock to which i always go so there's that rock that you always run to when there's flooding when there's a storm <coughs> when there's a 4.1 earthquake in haryana whenever there's something that shakes the ground beneath you you run to that rock be my rock which i always run to be my rock which so that's what worship is worship is what god does worshiping god is what god does that is not that he's worshiping himself but what he does for you as you receive that enjoy that live off that you are essentially worshiping god this takes it away from the singing and dancing doesn't it it takes it away from the singing for the most of us think that worship is what the singing but how empty the singing is when you don't know what god can be to you and how he has been to you this past week how empty the song is there must be a craving an emptiness a hollowness in the heart of god when he says to the people in malachi close your doors of worship i don't want to listen to your praise anymore because you have worshiped me with your lips but your hearts are callous towards me that's some fatal stuff right there god knows when the song is empty he knows that so there's here's me after 25 years of ministry shutting down all music and everything to say let's get back to the heart of worship when the music fades because if i wanted to create a situation where i can i can have all of you on in your in tears all emotional and everything and by wednesday morning you wouldn't have a god to lean on what i'm saying is i can be fake i know my capacity to be fake i know how talent can make us fake we've got to get to a place where the rock beneath us is god that's when i lift my hands up because the the feet my feet are on the rock but my hands are up in praise if my hands are up in praise but my feet are not on the rock it's just a matter of time before my hands are going to come down if you know what i mean enjoying god's presence means expressing my thanks and praise to god enjoying god's presence means expressing my thanks and praise to god for the benefits and advantages i have already enjoyed and i'm about to enjoy so the first one is utilizing him what he provides that's worship so when you enjoy his strength you're worshiping god <coughs> when you express that you're enjoying his strength you're worshiping god so he says uh, expressing your thanks for what he is about to do and what he has already done so that thanksgiving that willingness to be grateful that expression of great gratitude saying thank you through the day is something that reminds you because you can't just say thank you without knowing what you're saying thank you for so you begin to uh, connect the thanks okay thanks for getting me through that issue thanks for sorting that out thanks for just uh, uh, you know helping me with wisdom and understanding for that given situation so he says present your supplications with thanksgiving present your supplications 
with thanksgiving. So when you pre present your request to God, you're saying thank you because you know that it's going to be done. So the promises we have in Jesus Christ are yes and amen. Amen? Yeah. yeah. So enjoy God's presence means in expressing my thanks and praise for the benefits. Christianity is a singing faith. It is not a chanting faith. Christianity is a singing faith. We have a song for every theology, for every uh, issue and time in our life. We have a song for every occasion. We are a singing faith. We are not a chanting faith. And by that we mean you need to learn to sing. You need to learn to sing. You need to learn to sing it out. And if you sing flat, that's okay. That's fine because God sees the heart, but the song is what brings it out. So we need to learn to sing. So put on, put on some music in the car, put on the music on your headphones or whatever. And in your private time of worship, set some music up. Not that you're depending on that, but it guides you. It starts you up. It gets you going to be able to think. Because worship leaders, real, real good worship leaders, they're thinking the whole day. They're sitting in some basement somewhere sitting on a mountain, sitting in some inspired place, somewhere, thinking the whole day how they could create more worship uh, to present on your behalf. So it's a singing faith. So enjoy God's uh, presence by expressing that thanks. And number three, enjoy God's presence uh, means also means drawing yourself. Listen to me very carefully. It means drawing yourself out of the carnal, out of the physical world and enter the spiritual realm, enter the, uh, the eternal realm. What do I mean by that? It sounds very mystical. But you're an eternal being. And you have been given eternal life now. So when Jesus said, those who are passed from death unto life, those who have been given eternal life is now. So your eternal life has already begun. Problem is you're still in the body. Okay? So here's your eternal life. Started from the day you gave your life to Christ till the end of eternity. This is it. From the day you give your life to the end of eternity. But from the day you give your life to the day you die physically, you still have your body. And from there onwards, you're living continuously in the eternal realm, in the spiritual realm. <clears throat> so the moment your body falls to the ground, I will personally put it into the ground and I will pray over it and I will, I will tell them to cover it up. But you have gone on to live in the spiritual realm. But that spiritual realm, for most people, things seems to begin after I die. But that is not true. My spiritual life, my ability to connect with the spiritual realm, my ability to connect with God and even engage with angels, uh, don't, don't read too much into this, but my ability to, to enter into what God is doing in the spirit realm, to know what God is doing in the spirit realm and to be able to engage with that, to see beyond the fact that guy was so rude to me, yeah. Why was he so rude to me? Why did that call have to come at that time? <clears throat> five minutes before I went up to pray, preach the message, or five minutes before the baptism, my, la uh, my uh, ground, ground floor guy calls me and says, the pump is gone. Yesterday. Yesterday. The pump is on. Please come and do something about it. I said, oh. five minutes before baptism service. And you step out of that physical reality, step into the spiritual reality and say, God, what's going on here? Who's trying to discourage me or or distract me right now what's going on lord take care of the pump i need to get i need to baptize 15 people you see what i'm saying i'm thinking 9000 rupees pump is going to cost 9000 rupees it's going to dry up it's going to blow up and that fellow is going to get mad at me because he says from the morning it's been going on. very quickly the physical life will suck you in unless you learn to live swing between the two and you step out of that. If you're driving the car, God will drive your car for you if you step out of that into the spiritual realm and enjoy the presence of God. Learning to enjoy the presence of God is not mystical. It is very real because you are a spiritual being. And if as a spiritual being who's been given the Holy Spirit and your spirit has been made alive, for he has made us alive in Christ, in Ephesians chapter 2, if all of that has been given to you and you're still stuck in the spiritual realm and all you can see is what your eyes can see and all you can feel is what's around you, you're not monopolizing and you're not worshiping. That's not worship. Worship is stepping out of the, 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 the physical reality into the spiritual reality that is now yours by faith and enjoying a greater scope, a greater vision of what God is doing in your place. So, we are eternal beings. We are made alive in Christ and we have eternal life. So we learn to swing between the two. Prayer is your gateway to this eternal realm. 
the moment, don't close your eyes while you're driving. Don't close your eyes while you're driving. Otherwise, you'll get there pretty quick. <laughs> you'll be really, really there. So, how do you do this? How, how do you get practice? Because you can't go wrong with it. Start practicing. Moving into a spiritual, so that you rise above just a physical body experience to begin to do life from eternal point of view. For your life is now hidden with Christ and God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. So your perspective is heaven down. Your perspective is heaven down. This is how I see it. I do this in the context of my day, that's time, 24 hours, and my eternal existence in God, that's purpose. Time and purpose. I do this in the context of my day, my 24-hour day, and in the context of who I am right now in the midst of eternity. You see what I'm saying? So I'm living right now, it's 9-5 on September 11th, but I'm also smack bang in the middle of eternity. So what am I doing and who, who am I being and what is God doing right now, today at 9 o'clock and also right now in the heart of eternity? That's what I want. I do this in the context of my day, that's time, my eternal existence, that's God's purpose. Firstly, deliberately find places, situations and opportunities to, 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 to have many to intense, many to intense worship sessions alone. Do that. Uh, some of you are on the bus a lot. Some of you are on the metro a lot. Some of you are, do some, learn to just stop and say, my thoughts are now going to go towards what God is doing in my life, who God is to me, and go over those verses. We'll get to that in just a bit. So deliberately, deliberately. Number, secondly, tune your heart and tame your tongue. Tune your heart to praise. Because your heart is tuned to actually grumble. Your heart is tuned to whine. Your heart is tuned to, to bitterness. That's what the natural tune is. So you retune your heart to praise. Set your heart to praise and tame your tongue to praise. The tongue can say a bad word much faster than it can say thank you Jesus. So tune, tame your heart, tame your tongue to praise. Thirdly, knowing truth about God, know enough scripture to sing back to God. Thank him, delight in him, rejoice in him. Know truth about God, know the, 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 the scriptures enough for you to be able to pray scriptures back to God rather than saying Lord I, I love you, you're so cool. You know, you're awesome, God. You're awesome. Yes, he is awesome, but about what? So we don't know enough scriptures to actually know the theology, the character of God that we're worshiping. So we need to know that. Number three, uh, number three, no, no truth. Number four, keep an open-ended thread of communication. Today in your Outlook, when you, when you start emailing somebody, they email back and then they email back and then you email back. And, and now you've got a whole thread yeah, that ongoing thread of communication between, your, between you and God is what needs to be maintained. Don't keep it as independent SMSs. Remember when in, in the earlier years, we had got an independent SMS and then you delete that. Yeah, and then you send an SMS, you can't remember what you sent. And then God, God sends you back an SMS and you're like, whoa, okay. And now you're not able to make the connection because it's not a conversation. It's just random texts. But they took it from Apple, of course, because Apple is the best. Uh, and now they've got everything down the middle where everything's in a conversation. There's a reason for that. They figured it out. Because now you're connecting a relationship. Because what I said to you today has some bearing on what I'm saying to you. What I said to you yesterday has some bearing on what I'm saying to you today and everything you said in between. Keep an open thread of communication with God. Remember what you just told him. Remember what you argued with him. Remember what you're processing with him and keep it going. So like a conversation between two friends and then suddenly the, the gas wala comes in the middle and you're like, ah, take it, take it. Achha, what were we talking about? That kind of thing. Keep that going with God through the day. And make God the person you talk to the most. You'll be the smartest man on the earth. You'll be the smartest woman on the earth if you make God your most company. Your most company. Keep an open-ended uh, thread of communication. Fifthly, fifthly, all of it is worship, not just the singing. All of it is worship. Your prayerful conversation, that's worship. You're arguing and you're struggling with him and you're cursing and swearing with God saying, Lord, why is it your character issues, your forgiveness, your challenges. 
your difficult people in your life the when everything that you argue with god about everything that what you're doing is you're depending on him for wisdom you're depending on him for strength to deal with that person to deal with that other situation that dependence that enjoying of him in your life is worship is that good news that is worship <coughs> but when you begin to express that you're doing that recognize that you're doing that uh, uh acknowledge that you're doing that that's that's what seals the deal you're 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 arguing and you're struggling number 3 your excitement about his provision tell him you're excited about that tell him that you're thankful tell him that you enjoyed the fact that he took care of that situation his deliverance his healing his pres presence for strength in your life you're reminding yourself what god has done constantly what christ has done for you who you are to you don't let it be only sunday morning but every now and then oh god if it wasn't for the cross Oh God if it wasn't for the cross thank you for the cross you're not going to be ranting you're not going to be ritual about this it's not it's not just chanting you are actually destroying satan's authority in your life every time you bring up the blood and the cross every time you say the name of jesus in a godly way opposite to the way the satan uses it on his television you are destroying satan's authority in your life satan's ability his hold on your life every time you use the name of jesus if you've noticed we use the word god a lot but we don't want to use the word jesus there's a word there's a reason for that because the bible says no one who says jesus is lord can do it without the prompting of the holy spirit so there is a power in that name there's a power in the name of jesus that's why last week i did an entire the whole worship theme was on the name of jesus the wonderful name of jesus so uh you remind yourself of who you are in christ of what he has done for you and lastly uh your favorite tunes of worship songs <laughs> all of it is worship even when you're just playing your favorite songs oh i really like this song oh i really like it. even that is worship even that is worship so don't stop that don't stop playing worship get worship sets get uh get uh playlists get favorite lists and run it let there be worship in your heart constantly today i want us to think about worshiping without a leader worshiping without a leader or in other words leading yourself to worship leading yourself to worship psalm 42 verse 5 says why my soul are you downcast why so disturbed within me put your hope in god for i will yet praise him my savior and my god psalm 13 13 verse 6 says i will sing the lord's praise for he has been good to me i will i will do this i will do this soul why aren't you doing this what is wrong with you why are you all morose why are you frowning why aren't you smiling why aren't you singing why you turn around and you talk to yourself and you become your worship leader lead yourself to worship when you have been leading yourself to worship through the week when the worship leader gets up he just has to start the fire and everybody goes to you know today i want us to think about that three things we're going to think about very practically one today and the first one today is can we worship without a worship leader tomorrow we're going to start churches in homes we're going to start churches in out, uh, outposts and and uh, all over the countryside do we need a worship leader and a band for everything do we not know enough scripture do we not know enough of the character of god do we need a reason do we need an excuse what do we need to start worshiping just say go i was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the lord i was glad not because nicole uh, was coming into town mullins was coming around but because god is in the house amen i was glad when they said let us go into the house of the lord and that's what david said so i don't shouldn't need a reason to worship i just need the tap open and boom i go for it why because there's been worshiping worship happening in my heart throughout the week throughout the week it goes both ways you worship god and you enjoy god's presence and that he gives you a thirst for it he gives you a thirst and that's why you worship so you get started make the first move and god will do the rest how to enjoy god one on one and find strength in his presence wonder thirst and rest <clears throat> 